a Rebel Rouser. I'm Alan Boyvada. This is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So this is episode 3,638, and this is the third of seven reflection episodes that I'm doing where, yeah, we're not turning the camera off and turning it back on. I'm not doing multiple takes on stuff. I'm just talking straight through to you, and we're talking today about genre stuff in my reflections on that particular topic over 10 years of Star Wars podcasting that I've done, or at least close to have done. The actual anniversary is July 7th. But so one of the things that that people have talked about over the years is how Star Wars can kind of absorb every genre, or that it is kind of able to reflect every genre. And you think about that in terms of just what the original A New Hope was, like it was part Western and it was part, um, you know, samurai movie and it was part, you know, science fiction, part fantasy and ultimately sort of created its own genre of space opera. But space opera was one big melting pot where, you know, all of these different ideas and influences could get thrown in. And then when the canon rebooted, there was the opportunity for people to say, okay, you know, what really is Star Wars and what actually belongs in Star Wars from, you know, a storytelling perspective, a genre perspective, like what actually works here? You know, does everything still work? Is it still the same kind of, you know, all-encompassing storytelling situation that we, you know, that we've thought it was? And the answer, of course, turns out to be yes. And the way that the fine folks at Lucasfilm have been pursuing this over the last 10 years is really pretty amazing. I mean, we do have a straight-up Western with the, um, with the Mandalorian, which is then turned into sort of a, a lone wolf and cub samurai kind of thing also. So basically taking what you know, was great about the original Star Wars and you know, putting another spin on it. Um, you know, we had a sort of gangster-ish saga with the Book of Boba Fett, which, you know, yeah, the execution on that, like, I know there are people who really love it. Personally, for me, you know, it doesn't necessarily fly as high, but that's perfectly okay. I'm super psyched for all of the people who really love it, that they have it to love. Like, it's fantastic. You know, the Ahsoka series being the first, like, jedi Focus series, they did really well with that. And the Night Sisters, like, bringing in that sorcery aspect of things was tremendous and or with its political intrigue is just phenomenal like that we actually have a you know a drama on the like you know the likes of the americans or homeland like you know just any sort of like really tense spy thriller kind of situation and then you know bringing star wars visions into the fold and all of these you know anime situations the fact that star wars has put out mangas and has put out original mangas in the last you know 10 years is just it, it's astounding like they really have tried to you know spread the you know spread the idea of the franchise and expand its boundaries in ways that feel creative and fresh and yeah i know they were doing that to some degree in the old expanded universe but you know even even though I wasn't necessarily familiar with a lot of what happened in the expanded universe, like I still had a sense of it. And over the years, I've been, you know, learning more about it here and there as, you know, I encounter people talking about it and you know, people either saying, you know, yeah, that was great. Or yeah, there was some stuff that was great and some of it was trash or it was all trash or whatever the case may be, or even just having gone through the, um, you know, Chris Kemshaw's book, uh, The History and Politics of Star Wars, and just the, um, the amazing scholarship of that and all the sources that he is drawing from. Same thing, all like reflects on genre and about how amazingly diverse Star Wars storytelling is, how capable it is of containing so many different storytelling styles and traditions, and managing to wrap it all up in something that becomes universal. And ultimately, maybe that is what, you know, Star Wars' appeal is. It's a type of storytelling genre that, you know, is its own and can absorb everything else's and become a melting pot that people, you know, can enjoy influences from for all sorts of, of different 
cultures and civilizations and uh and over time right like different you know like it's not it's not time bound or time constraint like different story forms that have been you know popular over different centuries like you know you think about even the um the William Shakespeare Star Wars book adaptations, right? Like, um, or even the Odyssey one that just came out a couple of years ago. Like, it has just been so flexible and so, you know, beautifully, beautifully creative. And the people who are creating for Star Wars have been, you know, spectacular and have been able to say, look what I can do with Star Wars. And everything feels like it's Star Wars to some degree, and yet also feels like it's wholly its own. Like, it's, you know, I know that people talk about oh yeah you gotta you know read other influences and whatnot and actually star wars ends up being a jumping off point where you can be like well if you like this particular aspect about star wars then you know, it gives you a, a path into other you know types of storytelling basically that are not star wars so that ends up being sort of your uh, your gateway into it so i have been very pleased about what star wars has done with genre storytelling and what you know how how it's expanded the notion of what star wars can be over the past 10 years and hopefully you feel the same way about it and if there are genres that you think star wars hasn't yet pursued but you'd love to see them pursue then i'd love to hear what you think about that so comments are right there in youtube and in the q a at spotify and if you're catching this anywhere else then please head over to the blog post for the show's episode at sw7x7.com and let me know what you think excuse me <laughs> that is going to do it for this episode of the show. If you enjoy the show, if you have enjoyed the show at any point in these past 10 years and think it's worth sharing with someone else who might like a daily dose of Star Wars joy in their lives, then please help me get the word out about it. And um, you can also help me as an independent creator keep producing this show. And you can learn more about that at patreon.com slash sw7x7. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the podcast. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be.